This is the majestic Mulcair River, home to a wide variety of fish species. The Mulcair catchment drains an area of 650 square kilometers, spanning counties Limerick and Tipperary. The EU-funded Mulcair Life Project has been ongoing since late 2009. In 2014, it's drawing to a close. The project's main objective is to restore and enhance habitat for Atlantic salmon, sea lamprey and the European otter. The key project partners include Inland Fisheries Ireland, Limerick County Council and the Office of Public Works. And then there's a very significant uh, financial partner in the National Parks and Wildlife Service that act as a co-financier of the project. For almost 140 years, the Mulcair catchment has been subjected to extensive drainage works, which has led to a degradation of habitat and a decline in the Atlantic salmon population. Mulcair Life has been working to enhance the salmon population through in-stream works and by removing barriers to passage and upstream migration. The drainage here in the Mulcair had a negative impact on salmon production. Many of the rivers in Ireland, going back right back to famine days, were drained, which meant they were lowered, they were widened, they were straightened. In scientific terms, essentially, that destroyed their morphology. It simplified them. It removed a lot of the physical complexity and once you do that it has negative impacts on the ecology of the river. So the purpose of reintroducing rock, be it uh, rubble mats or vortex weirs and other structures, is to restore that rifle glide pool sequence. If we get the physical farm right, the natural ecology will recover and the fish numbers will increase. The Mulcair River hosts a healthy population of sea lamprey but they face many challenges on their return migration when attempting to move upstream to spawn. The work Mulcair Life has undertaken has included tracking and monitoring sea lamprey to see how they cope with the obstacles they face and removing these barriers. If they weren't achieving passage at Anicotic Weir, the first barrier, they were simply moving off. They were moving back down uh, the Mulcair. So the, the radio tracking proved very useful in that regard. But what it also proved to us is that we had to do something at Anacotti and we had to do something at Ballyclock. As a result of that, we designed a new tile, the very first sea lamprey tile that would work in an Irish context. And basically, it's ABS plastic. It's a very hard plastic, and it lowers the velocity of the water coming over the face of the weir, and the sea lamprey attach to the base and wiggle their way up. It's as simple as that. The second barrier was at Ballyclock Weir, and in the summer of 2013, we removed part of Ballyclock Weir, which again, facilitated both salmon passage and sea lamprey passage. European otter are known to be widespread in the Mulcair catchment. Mulcair Life's work is sustaining the otter population. Five catchment-wide otter surveys have been conducted to map otter density and distribution. Mulcair Life has also installed a large number of artificial otter holts and carried out habitat enhancement works predominantly on old oxbow lakes and smaller streams. You hardly ever see an otter, they're very elusive. So when we go surveying for otters, what we have to do is look for their signs. And there's two main signs we look for, there's footprints and also then their droppings called sprints. And most of the survey work is actually looking for sprints. It's a rapid assessment survey, so it's just purely for the Mulcair catchment. And what we've been finding is from previous surveys done in the Mulcair, the presence of otter has gone from about 50 to 55 percent, and I think last year it was up around 60 percent. Riparian management is another key focus of Mulcair life. The riverbanks have faced major problems over the years due to the threat posed by non-native invasive plants such as giant hogweed, Japanese knotweed, and Himalayan balsam. Dense infestations of these non-native plants can significantly limit the growth and abundance of native riparian vegetation. This can have a negative and damaging impact on the riparian environment and the river's ecosystem. Uh, we use an environmentally friendly herbicide uh, to spray the invasives. Uh, this herbicide has been approved for use in an aquatic environment. Cattle with direct access to rivers have caused problems for water quality. Mulcair Life has worked closely with local farmers over the past five years to create alternative drinking water solutions. Under the grand scheme at Mulcair Life, they, they provide troughs and the piping of the water down to wherever. So looking enough, I had water 
within two fields of here. So I was able to continue on the, 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 the main water pipe. They worked brilliantly from the, from the point of view the cattle have clean water now to drink. And from the point of view of disease, they're better off to drink in clean water. Community outreach work is an important part of the Malcare Life project. Malcare Life carry out an environmental education program with local primary and secondary schools to teach them about the importance of the river catchment as a vital natural resource. Malcare conservation volunteers have taken an active role in practical conservation work. Malcare Life also raises public awareness through training workshops, seminars, conferences and other events. Well, it's, it's great that they have knowledge of the local river and they learn to respect it and, you know, leave nothing but um, footprints, isn't that what they say? So just that they'd, they'd learn about the local rivers and so it's just something that's really important to schools and discovery primary science as well. We've had hugely successful events over the last four or five years. Events like World Fish Migration Day, Heritage Day, uh, Fisheries Awareness Week and events like that. As Mulcair life draws to a close after five years, the positive legacy of the project looks certain to run long into the future. The successes have been immense. The various agencies and communities must now take up the baton to move forward the conservation blueprint established by Malcare Life to ensure the river continues to flow in all her beauty for future generations to enjoy. <laughs>